name is Pascal Corbet and today I want to show you a little bit about video interviews and how to present in an online webinar without having to become completely media savvy but just to avoid a couple of the serious blunders that you can run into. I know you are a thematic expert and you want to keep it like that, you don't want to become a, a video presenter personality but there's a couple of things you better respect and it makes the whole appearance and the attention level of your audience much better. Now the first thing that I want to talk to you about is sound. You might think, why sound? It's all video, it's all visuals, isn't it? But if you think of it, it's actually quite obvious why it is like that. If you have a transmission of a video signal, let's say from Africa, the connection is not that great and the picture of the presenter sometimes becomes a bit blurry or the PowerPoint slide disappears even every once in a while. It's not such a big deal as if the sound of the person becomes like this and, and, and you don't really know what he's actually been saying. Is Did I miss a proper, very important word in the meantime and all that. So what can you do to actually avoid that? Because this is all about avoiding things, not you know just giving you an impression what all can go wrong. So first of all, what you can do in the live session, you can... Make sure that your main presenters dial in via telephone and don't rely on the internet connection for the sound. Secondly, you can talk to your presenters and ask them to take out their cell phone, simple cell phone, whatever, and choose the sound recorder, voice recorder option and just make sure that they push the button, start the recording before they present and then after the whole thing is done, they close it and they send it off to the video guy. What I do then is I take that recording, the, the, the sound recording, and I match it with the recording from the session that I have from the presentation side, and I make sure that I substitute the sound. Therefore, I, I, have, I can make sure that the sound of the main presenters, of the moderators, is crisp and clear, which is the most important part. Uh, in, in this with Another thing with sound is actually the background noise. Uh, that might be obvious for some people. You need to close the windows, you should close the doors, you should make sure there's no people out in the passage having a party or there's maybe don't uh, choose a place where there's a lot of people going outside or there's a, a bathroom next door where there's always flushing of water all the time. These sort of things, that's obvious. But still, you need to put it on your checklist Remember, when you start, close the windows, close the doors, make sure there's nobody running outside or beforehand choose the right location in the first place. Another thing is, which is a bit more difficult, air conditions. They keep on humming and people are not really that aware of them when they sit there because they're used to the noise. But actually in the recording for other people, they're actually much more irritating than what people actually think. So make sure that you turn them off. Talking about noise, actually one more thing which is quite important. People nowadays often use laptops with built-in microphones and they're, they're brilliant. But obviously, you don't really sit that close to the microphone that you have that sort of intimate sound like you have like this and because you want to have a distance to your computer. So what is sometimes, especially if you have background sound that those kind of microphones pick up, what you do is you take one of those old-fashioned headsets, doesn't have to be one of those, can also be one of those things that stick in your stick in your ears. This has a certain advantage actually, because the microphone is usually made in a different way, so it doesn't pick up background sound. So in a way, it would pick up the sound. What you need to remember when you use a headset is Never put it up close to your mouth like this because if these things are sometimes a bit longer what happens is you have the constant <sighs> and that happens even if people are not even presenting. They don't turn off their microphone so the moderator doesn't really know what's going on and they also don't want to cut people off uh, properly all the time because they might want to ask a question and so forth. So they have the breather in. Now what you do is you just make sure that you keep this thing closer 
to the lower part of your of, of your mouth so you don't breathe into it all the time and what you also shouldn't do is constantly if somebody can't hear you because whatever happens in the in the automatic field there uh, microphones are turned off constantly start doing this because what it sounds like is is like this i show you this all the time yeah so leave it alone once you have it on and somebody says i can't hear you don't immediately go like this and, and do this, this sort of thing it's terrible now i want to show you one more thing if you want to go all out and make sure that the sound is really good it's not such a big deal to invest in something like a a proper microphone like this and it gives you a good sound what you can do is let me put it back here you can get a microphone one of those stands you put it on your table put the microphone in and all you have if you want to do this a little bit more often you have a proper sound throughout all your webinars and and your um, video interviews and so forth and I'm sure you can use it here and there just to be complete. There's one technical issue that tends to be forgotten by many presenters in webinars. It's the fact that they look onto their own PowerPoint presentation instead of in the camera. Imagine I would be looking like a picture of myself or of the co-moderators or the other people all the time like this here. Or even if it's slightly off and I look here, it's not the same as if I look into the camera. And this might be a bit confusing for you to, to consider this way. So you might always just want to have a quick look at your, uh, at your presentation and keep on going like this. Not a problem, but keep your eye contact. It's very important. It's not any different to any other things that you hear about but on, on the internet, but it's very important, especially for the webinars where uh, contribution, contributions tend to get lengthy. And if there's, if you do a little bit of movement and gesture is also quite okay and gets a little bit of life into it. Especially if you consider that on the actual recording later on or also during the webinar, your, um, your image just gets reduced to the side there and it's a little small and that's basically usually mostly what moves even if you show powerpoints animations on powerpoints usually can't be shown during webinars you take a lot of risk if if you try because it usually doesn't work so look in the camera now we come to the point of light light is obviously critical in in, in a certain way I don't want to go into all sorts of things because you don't have really in the in the office environment that sort of uh, possibilities to change things too much around. Now, natural light, like it comes in here, is, is sometimes a bit of a problem. As you can see now, the sun is coming out. It mixes with the other light. So that's going to be some trouble in, in some respect. But you don't have that possibility usually. You can you pull the shades and so forth to, to make a light better. But... I just want to stress one thing that shouldn't happen is that you have the light behind you. I know sometimes it's a bit difficult because you have you have your office there, your desk, your lawn and so forth. But see, that's what's going to happen. Imagine I sit here, somewhere here, and then you can't see me. I'm presenting something and even though you're looking on the uh, PowerPoint, this is not going to this is not going to help. Now the camera this is a good camera, so it does, does something about it, but it's usually a problem. So don't sit in front of the window. Okay. Now I come to a point that is probably of the biggest interest to most presenters. That's content. All that stuff that's in, in their heads, you know, all these books, all that knowledge. And now they get driven often by the knowledge that they have and their wish to bring this across. Now, this can lead to that absorption with the content is king, but the king is not all there is on the stage with King Lear. There's more to it. There's the audience and their interest. So you need to be able to actually capture them for a longer time. And how long you can do that depends on a number of factors, how well you can speak, how well you can present, 
how much is going on in your presentation, how you vary your speech, all that. That can't be learned by just listening to what I'm saying. But be aware that the usual speaker probably after 10 minutes has has lost a couple of people along the way and now should probably have an intermission. So my suggestion is just do yourself a favor, talk to the moderator and after 10 minutes ask for a first round, round of questions. Don't just let it be comprehension questions, you know, sort of what was this in part three? Is it really 10 million or 10, 10 billion or something? But ask for a moderate first round of questions. Now, this will bring people back in. Oh, oh, sorry. Okay, something's going on. I can now participate. And I always just wanted to actually ask this one question in the first place anyway. Now, let me come on and put it in the chat box. This is what you want people to do. You want to have them, hello, the teacher is now all of a sudden asking questions, come back to the seat. This is what you want to. Now, the second advantage of that is that especially with an online audience, you might see a couple of names on the list or you, but usually you only see there's 50 people logged in. You don't know who they are. You don't know what they're actually doing. So you will get some information about some people and what their interest is. And it might give you the opportunity to reconsider for the next step of your presentation in which way to, to gear where you're going, who you actually talk to, uh, do you need to pick somebody up in a certain aspect because some of these people are, are, are not really at where you actually wanted to start. You need to go maybe a step back. So you might have to leave the path that you had decided to, to take and take a different path and that might give you some insecurity but if you speak into the camera and you let go of your initial concept this will actually add a lot to your presentation this brings me to the three phases of any video production like most project cycles we have a, a pre-phase the pre-production the production and the post-production and most people that participate in a webinar only concerned about the webinar, the actual production, because that's where they hold their presentation and that's their main focus. That's a serious omission for a number of reasons. First of all, you have a lot of technology involved. So you should always have a trial run with the moderator looking at the software. So the preparation means that you're not only looking at actually how to actually do your PowerPoint and what you actually want to do, but that you look at the software. Now, a key point that I suggest to you here is that you do this as in science called ceteris paribus. You keep the number of factors as close as possible to the actual show later on. In other words, there's so many factors on the internet that are beyond your control that can make your life a misery when you're on the on the live event uh, with the software. So make sure that you, you keep the factors um, that can go out of control as least as possible. In other words, you look at, you use the same computer that you want to use later on. You use the same office, you sit in the same chair, you position everything already as you want it. You uh, use the same time of day because of lighting. You use the same day of the week because of maybe traffic passed by. So not the Sunday morning try run and then Monday morning you have the actual show. These sort of things. Secondly, remember that your webinar can be used in terms of two products. You have the live show, but you also have the later on post-produced recording and uh, this can actually cater for different audiences who have different viewing habits there are a lot of people that are actually not really keen on actually participating and spending lots of time that might be wasted with some technological uh, mishaps in between but they want to actually participate and ask questions there are other people that rather want to have the recording where they can move the lever and skims through quickly that actually enjoy 
that that things are combined and that they can watch it or download it and watch it while they're on traveling or something or sitting somewhere else uh, on Saturday morning in the airplane and so forth. Now, you want in order to cater for that second audience as well, there's a number of things that you might, uh, might want to remember in terms of how you structure your webinar. So make sure that everything is is clear in terms of which steps there are, the way that people are introduced, that you keep housekeeping separate from the actual uh, content that is delivered. But also make sure that your video is properly edited. What I'm talking about is not just a technical edit so that you do the sound improvement, that you take out the little mishaps that you were talking to the presenter about how actually uh, why the video, uh, the, the PowerPoint is not shown, that you take that out, but also that you have someone who edits the video in terms of maybe two lengthy passages and that empowers him or herself to, to make sure that you get under an hour usually in the actual recording, even though the whole thing was maybe one and a half hours, you go for 45 minutes. So you take off all the technical stuff, you take off the... The, mod the, the starter moderation that introduced people, you use just, uh, you know, inserts at the bottom that actually make sure that you don't have to introduce people. Uh, you have uh, the, the material, the write-ups that come with it, obviously show who the people are so you can, you can skip that. But also if somebody tends to get too lengthy on something, then empowers him or herself to just take it out. Finished, yeah? And that's a very important point. And lastly, on this post-production issue, there's something that's not really the actual post-production, but that feeds into it. It's the point that you consider the outreach. Your webinar recorded or recording and the editing should be edited in a way that your social media outreach and your YouTube or Vimeo placement is done properly and that, that you have proper materials that can go with it. So you need to have somebody who actually also looks at what kind of thumbnails are presented, puts in words that those words need to be considered. They need to be discussed so that they, that they uh, entice people to actually click. It's called a call to action. The titles of the YouTube need to be done in a way that the search engine on YouTube, which is not quite as fancy as the Google itself, Google's uh, uh, search engine, even though YouTube is part of Google, so that you have more important words in the beginning of the title, which increases the picking up through the search searches that people run. Now, it remains for me to say this all feeds into the overall success of the video in itself, so that you have more views that people actually come to your video in the first place to watch it. And then only once they started watching the video and then, then the next success factor is how long they actually watch the video, not only the views, but the view time, which you can monitor in the back end of your YouTube channel. Your service provider will do that for you. The success factor is always a function of how many and how long they watch. No matter how much you consider your, your um, target group not to be the overall and you don't want to hunt for as many views as possible, that's all fair and well. But in a way, obviously, you need to be able to have the largest amount of people of your target group to watch. So you need to make sure that you cater for them. One more thing before we are almost finished here is privacy. Privacy is now almost notorious, I would say, with the new EU data protection regulation. But it's quite important to remember that most webinars are conducted in a secluded area. So it's either within a company or it's on invitation only. So usually you don't have the what's necessary expressed written consent for publishing and that even means the names of the people that are maybe in the q a session cannot be mentioned and uh, you probably get that from your uh, from your presenters but all the people that come in and and talk in the q a they, they you don't have their consent so what you can do is you can 
cut out the whole Q&A, which is obviously not the nicest way to do it because there that might be even the most interesting parts when people come in. Well, the other way is that you make sure that the moderator repeats the questions, maybe from the chat or even if it's asked online uh, through a normal talking, that she, she or he repeats it. And then you make sure if you refer to the question that you say in the last question, it was this and that. So yeah, that you don't mix it with the name. And then you keep a gap and then you refer to the content so that the voice goes down and that the editor later on has a, a chance to actually take the, the name out without having too much of an interruption. So don't start a sentence and raise and then say the name and then continue on the theme that the, the question was about. Two final thoughts on this. First of all, always remember that it's important in your presentation and that goes beyond the video presentation. It's also for other presentations. It's important to tell people why something is important. Don't get stuck only on the what and drag that on for half an hour or three times 10 minutes with intermission. How and why is it important? Secondly, go back to the first part of the video and look at the sound, how it was there now. Remember what I said about how important sound is. The first part is recorded with the internal camera of my computer. And the second part is with this other uh, microphone here. Yeah, and you can hear the difference. Take a look. And if you need some support, go and send us an email at contact at corbycoms.com. I put it down in the notes.